I was involved in the gaga of the world. I'm in the middle of this. All right, I'm interviewing Jim Garrison. He's the district attorney from New Orleans. And he is investigating the Kennedy murders on his own, later led to the movie JFK. Got to know Jim pretty good, liked him. And he was convinced that there was a plot, that Lee Harvey Oswald was a patsy, it was set up. He may have been part of it, but there was a lot involved. Could have gone back to Cuba. He traced a lot of things, and he thought he was on to something big. Eventually a trial that he lost. So I was friends with Lou Wolfson, who recently passed away. He was a big financier in Miami, known as the great raider of the 50s, and interesting guy. And Lou and I were pretty close. And uh, so Lou, I had dinner with him subsequent to that. And he said, what would you think of Jim Garrison? He said, that's really interesting to me. Because Lou was into conspiracies a lot. I said, well, I, I don't know Jim Garrison, but I thought he was a hell of an interview, a hell of a story. He said, well, let's ask Dick Gerstein. And Dick was the district attorney in Miami. What does he think? So Dick says, well, I don't know the particulars of the Kennedy story, but I, I have great respect for Jim Garrison. And by the way, later became a judge. He said, uh, I, you know, I'm sure Jim thinks he, he is in on something, right? He's, you know, he's not a charlatan. He's not looking for headlines. If Jim says that he feels he's got the story. I don't know the story. So Lou Wolfson said, Let's, can we set up a dinner? So we had dinner. Me, Dick Gerstein, Lou Wolfson, and Jim Garrison. Now remember, I'm still a heady kid in the, all of this. I'm only in the business just 15 years, maybe 10. You know, I'm still, whoa. Lou Wolfson was like a hero to me. So we're talking, we're talking, and Lou looks at Jim Garrison and says, what do you need? Jim says, well, um, the state of Louisiana is gonna stop financing this, financing this thing I'm on because they, you're running out of money. He, what do you need? He said, well, you need $25,000. So Lou Wolfson, I tell you what, I'll give you $5,000 a month for five months to aid in your investigation. And how do we get the first 5,000 to you? We want to do this in cash. So Dick Gerstein says, uh, so Garrison says, uh, okay, Lou says, all right, Larry, you come to my house, I'll give you 5,000. And he was a control freak. And uh, you going back tomorrow? Yeah, so Larry, you drive Garrison to the airport and give him the 5,000. I said, okay. Now, in the subsequent months, we'll set it up. Gerstein will deliver it. Or I, I wasn't going to all, so Dick will get it. Somehow we'll get it to him. So I drove him to the airport and gave him the 5000 I don't. By the way, when he got out of the car, i never forget this, gets out of the car, looks in on the driver's side, on the passenger's side, and says to me, they're going to kill Robert Kennedy. It's the last words Jim Garrison ever said to me. They're going to kill Robert Kennedy. And he left. Now the next second month came about and Gerstein got the 5,000 and gave it to him. Now the third month is coming around and Lou Wilson gives me the 5,000 that I'm gonna to give to Gerstein to give to Garrison. I owed income taxes. I owed about $5,000. So, oh, Lou Wilson now goes to jail on a, a stock fraud. So we've got the third 5,000. So I said to Dick, Gerstein, do you think that I could use the five to pay the taxes, and then I'll get the five somewhere, and we'll eventually give it to Garrison? Well, I never got the five. I used it to pay taxes. Gerstein said it would be fine. He explained it to Garrison. Lou goes to jail. Lou comes out of jail. During the interim time before he went to jail, he had asked me to see if I could get Richard Nixon to look into his case possible pardon or something or something. Or he always felt he was innocent, and I felt he was innocent, by the way. This was subsequent to the Garrison thing, prior to the Garrison thing. So Nixon gets elected. I knew Nixon. I'd interviewed him. I call up Nixon and said, can I talk to you about something? And the proposal was Wolfson was going to form an organization called Democrats for Nixon, and he would fund it in return for Nixon should look into his case, the possibility of a pardon. All he wanted to do was look into it. So I fly to New York. Nixon is elected but has not taken office yet. It's a cold night in December. He's at the Pierre Hotel. I call him up. He says, okay, listen, I'll be down about, this is Nixon, president-elect. I'll be down the elevator in about a half hour. Meet me and we'll walk over. I'm going to Washington to name some cabinet members. You'll walk me over to the helipad 
from going to a helipad. So he comes down off the elevator, Secret Service is there, there's reporters. Hey, Larry, how are you? Now we're walking down the street. And he says to me, what brings you to New York? What do you want to see me about? And I couldn't ask him. Something told me this could be big trouble. I just couldn't ask him. So I just said, well, I wanted to make sure, I wanted to congratulate you. I'm, yeah, you know, I'm a Democrat, but, and uh, I hope you come on my show sometimes. He said, well, you could have asked me that on the phone. I said, yeah, it was nice to see you. I always like coming to New York. So we walked a few blocks. He went his way, I went my way. I don't forget some reporters following me. Who are you? What was he talking to you about? But I never broke. Lou goes to jail, and now he's pissed that I never asked him. When he gets out of jail, what happened to my 5000 I used it to pay. So he goes down to Dick Gerstein and charges me with fraudulently taking the 5000 So Gerstein is scrapped, but he's my friend. So they appoint a special prosecutor who's going to prosecute me on taking the 5000 which I never took was all of it. Anyway, it all blows up. The whole Garrison story breaks, his supporting the Wolfson raising money, and I was uh, indicted. So I lost my jobs. Three months later, the judge throws the whole thing out, but I lost my job. And I paid a price for ego. I let my ego get the best of me. Hey, Garrison, Gerstein, Wolfson, Kennedy, I was in a high. I was always in money troubles, which led me into this. It was my fault. I couldn't say it wasn't my fault. Gerstein had to do it, or he would have been. They would have. He was larger than me. He was district attorney. What was he doing running $5,000 from one guy in Miami to the district attorney? It was really convoluted. And, uh, but it was, you know, as I look back, an experience in my life. Did it affect me later? I don't know. The question is, did it affect me? I don't know if it did. Uh, I later saw Dick Gerstein a lot. He went into private life. He subsequently, everybody died that's associated with this. Everybody died. But I did see some stuff Garrison had that never got into the press or into the trial that has always left me open on this. An interview with a pilot. He played the interview for us at that dinner. A pilot who was hired by this guy in, in New Orleans to fly to Dallas. He's going to pick up a passenger at the airport. Didn't give him the name, but described him with fit the description of Lee Harvey Oswald. You wait at the Dallas airport. This kid's going to come take him to Mexico. And he paid him $5,000, this pilot, and you'll get another five when you come back. And we'll pay for the plane and everything. He said, well, I'm at the airport. The guy never came. I'm listening to this on tape. And Garrison said to Gerstein, what would you do with this? The pilot eventually died of a heart attack, a heart attack that people questioned. But I heard that tape. A totally believable guy. What did he have to lose? You know, the guy never came. I interviewed the cop who arrested Lee Harvey Oswald. My life's been a swerve. He arrested him in the movie theater after he shot Tippett. Oswald said only one thing on the drive from the movie theater to the jail. I'm a patsy. He didn't say he's innocent. He didn't say just I'm a patsy. What does patsy mean? Patsy lends you to think that he was involved in this, and someone was supposed to be downstairs at the book depository that wasn't there. And he panicked, ran around, shot Tippett, ran to a movie theater. Why would he use Patsy? Then he had to be killed, didn't he? See, this is for the conspiracy theorists. Because if Oswald, he's going to have a ton of information. So you got to get somebody to kill him who's totally like an innocent. You get Jack Ruby who loves the Kennedys and who's crazy. Get Jack Ruby to do it. You can't do it. You, the conspirator, you're going to get caught, but you got to get rid of Oswald. And I'm in the swirl of all this. I mean, I've heard all this stuff. It was heady. I paid a price for heady.